Hey everybody, welcome to a video on supply shifters. In this video, I'm following up on my previous one where I introduced the supply curve, which is based on a profit maximizing objective. And I'm going to explain some of the ways that a supply curve can entirely move for a market. So movements along the supply curve are different from movements of the curve. And so I'm talking about things besides price, things that actually require us to draw a new relationship between quantity and price. So here we go. I've got these three identical supply curves. First, let's illustrate it. A supply decrease is a shift to the left with lower quantities at every price. You pick a price and the red curve has a lower Q than the black curve. The supply increase is the opposite. It shifts to the right, to higher quantities. An increase in supply means that at any given price, there is a higher Q than there used to be. So what are some of the things that can make these, this supply curve shift? One of them is the number of sellers. If there are fewer sellers, that decreases supply. If there are more sellers, that increases supply. That one's pretty straightforward. Another thing that can change supply is technology. Now, I'm going to put this over here on the left. If there is worse technology in producing your product, that would decrease supply. There aren't many practical applications where that happens. So I'm going to ignore that one mostly. I just wrote it for balance's sake because we also have, when we get better production technology, that can increase supply. Keep in mind that when I say technology, I'm referring to the technology that I use in producing the good in this market. Next is resource prices or input prices. These can range from labor to resources to the cost of shipping, whatever things we have to pay to create our good. If your input prices rise, that's a decrease in supply because it gets more costly to run your business. And if your input prices fall, that's an increase in supply. Government intervention. Sometimes this is listed, sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's lumped into some sort of an input price or something. But basically, if you tax or regulate a firm, that can decrease supply. And if you subsidize or deregulate the firms, that can increase supply. Expectations. And when I say expectations, I mean producers' expectations of future prices. If expected prices rise, then supply today will fall. The reason for that is that firms would rather save their products until the near future when prices are higher than expected so that they can make more money by selling them when the price is good. Inherent in this is the assumption, of course, that we're capable of storing our good. On the other side of expected prices, if expected prices fall and there's not as much money to be made in the future, we'll supply more of our goods today. Next, price of related goods. We did this with demand. There were complements and substitutes for consumption. There's also complements and substitutes for production. A uh, substitute in production would be something that you make instead of your product. So this often happens in agriculture. You can plant wheat or corn, but not both in the same plot of ground. If the price of a substitute rises, the supply decreases. So if I'm a farmer deciding whether or not to supply corn or wheat and the price of wheat rises, my supply of corn will fall. Likewise, if the price of a substitute falls, the supply increases. Now for complements, these are reversed. A supply complement or a production complement are two goods that get produced together. Uh, so one example that I often use with my students is bacon and ham. Uh, in order to get bacon, I have to kill a pig. And once I've killed the pig, I might as well use the ham also. Forgive me if it's if that's kind of a gross example, but it's an easy and vivid one. If the price of ham falls, then I'm not going to want to kill as many pigs to make ham, and so I might supply less bacon also. Likewise, if the price of a complement rises, the supply will increase. So there is a quick crash course in supply shifters. I hope it's helpful to you. 
moving on from here, I'm going to make videos about market equilibrium and what happens when these curves shift and what they do to equilibrium. So I guess we'll see how it goes. Thanks for watching, guys. Happy econing.